Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to XCOM 2, the Valkyrie playthrough. We're ready to go on Operation Ghost Mask, which should be a rather easy mission compared to what we've been doing before. But uh, we're also going to be trying out a few new things, mainly Lena, our new, uh, well, Templar Trooper, if we can call her that. She's kind of like a side trooper, but uh, with some fancy blue no, purple sword. So uh, if we pull this off, we get another scientist. And uh, yeah, that's all I need to say about this. So let's get going. So it seems pretty straightforward. Neutralize all enemy targets as usual. And we need to destroy an alien transmitter relay to stop them from uh, sending whatever data they want to send. Don't know why that takes that long, but apparently it does. Dropping in right through the asphalt, apparently, for some, for some of our Valkyries. But uh, there we go. The communications relay is up ahead. Move in and destroy the target. Our position is masked. Seems pretty... Well, it seems like a pretty straight shot, actually. If we move all the way over here, it's inside of a building. But if we manage to blow that open, we might as well get a straight shot with a sniper rifle there. But, uh, yeah. Before we get there, we need to start moving. Uh, and there's no timer just yet because we have that boost from the resistance ring so as long as we're concealed the timer doesn't actually start so let's start moving up and I'll get back to you once something happens as Templar warriors my followers specialize in wielding psionic energy mastering the power that belongs to all who are truly of this earth through intense focus, we can twist the very fabric of the world around us. So Templar Focus, we get... Okay, we get a bit of an introduction to Templars. Templar Focus. Templars gain focus during missions by killing units with a rend. Each point of focus increases the Templars' combat effectiveness by boosting their mobility, dodge and rend damage. Focus can also be spent on powerful abilities which have increased effectiveness when used at higher focus levels. So... There we have Lena, she can only charge up to two, apparently, two charges of focus, if I understand this correctly. So, we'll see about that in a minute. Uh, but let's start moving forward here. And then I think Sarah might have triggered something. There we go, we have a turret. Turret are, turrets are, of course, hackable, uh, which might come in handy. Uh, the radius on that thing is pretty limited though so we're good for now so let's keep moving forward first turn for the aliens and nothing happens so they still don't know where we are we are fine for now but i'm gonna check out the turret because i think i can actually check that thing out before we do anything so let's go take a look so system overriding we have a 100 chance to shut it down and 61 percent chance to Temporarily take control. Hmm. A failed hack will increase this target's aim and defense stats. Well, aim and defense is not that much of a problem. This is our first action, so 61, we might as well try that. 61 are, well, over 50 50, so let's try that. And we get it. We get it by a lot. A serious margin. So now we control the turret, and we're gonna get its sight radius as well. So if we can see more aliens from over there, why not just kill it? There we go. Extremely well equipped mechanized combat unit. We'll need to look for vulnerabilities if we're going to take that thing out. So I think we're still in concealment, right? Yeah. So if we fire with this turret, do we actually lose concealment? Because I don't think we actually do. So let's fire with the No, this will reveal the squad. Okay, okay, okay. Need to be careful about that then. Um Let's move Lena first. Yes, Commander. Uh, along, and let's just move forward in general. We'll see you back in a second. There we go, put everything on Overwatch. And these things are actually coming closer. So I'm wondering if they spot the turret, is that going to be like a normal reveal or not? Because I never actually hacked the turret from concealment, if I recall correctly. Um, let's try that out first. So we have the turret now. We're 50-50. That's still 50-50 for some reason. Might as well try it now. We'll see how they react and where they go into cover. So let's fire at the Lancer first. And he completely misses. 
And now we get revealed. So they know all of our positions, so must be careful about that now. So they probably... Oh, the mech actually moves back. But the third can actually fire again. We get less chance on the stun lancer now. But although 50-50 on the mech. Let's see. The music is actually different than before as well. Which is uh, really nice. I really like this bit, bit of music. Um, let's put Jacqueline closer. Uh, no, Yvonne. Because Yvonne has, actually has shredding on her cannon. So if I can hit the... No, I can't hit the mech from over here. So that's too bad. Um, but I could possibly rend. How is this going to work? Because I think rend can do up to... Yeah, 4 to 5 damage. So if we use somebody else first to fire at the Lancer. We need to be careful with my position here a bit. Because uh, if we put them too close to one another, we're going to get grenaded in a second as well. But first shot on the Lancer, 68% chance with the shotgun. Here we go. And that's six damage, which is good. Perfect for Rend. So now we're going to move in and rend this guy. So there we go. Let's attack this guy. So 100%. So this can't miss. So this is going to be a guaranteed kill for Lena. Okay, that was awesome. So that even did 7 damage. Would have killed him if uh, she survived. Oh, crap. We did get one more focus. But we get uh, a sectoid and another lancer but i still have the flashbang the templars ebbs and flows with the tide of combat as we focus our energy our power increases and can be unleashed upon our enemies after using rend templars always trigger momentum a free movement action which allows them to return to the safety of cover if the templar has a parry ability they can instead use momentum to stay in the same location and prevent all damage from the next attack mates against them that is actually really cool. So I still have one more movement action. So that focuses on movement. I can't keep stringing attacks along like this. But we're not done yet. Um, how many... Oh, I still have another shot with the turret, actually. Might as well try Yvonne. No, Yvonne didn't have a shot, right? But she does have a grenade. And the grenades have increased... Blast radius when shot from the grenade launcher. Uh, but we're just too far away to do anything with that. So I think that Yvonne's shot is better used as a flashbang here. Since that's three enemies, we can flashbang. There we go. I think this one actually triggers all three of them. So flashbang in the face. Doesn't give us any shredding on the... Uh, the mech and the mech is probably immune to being disoriented but at least we got that going now the third the third can actually fire at the mech uh might as well do that now there we go that's one damage because of course the third has two uh two armor um i need three turns to actually get my hacking ability back so we won't be able to do anything with sarah over here but we can get her a bit closer She's quite a ways back now because of the hacking. Um, I have combat protocol on her, but I can't use it. Oh, I can. So I'm guessing, yeah, that's four to five damage on the mech. Might as well do that now because it's guaranteed damage. There we go. Combat protocol right on the mech. I didn't know you could do that on squad side, actually, because she can't see the mech from where, her, where she is. Two damage. Plus three damage, so that's five damage on the mech. And now one good shot will finish it off. But I don't think I have a lot of options left. So I still have Lena and a sniper rifle shot. So I think the sniper rifle shot is going to have to be it. Uh, and I have about 60% chance to hit it from here. So, fingers crossed. If it hits, it kills. But this... Yeah, we got a hit. There we go. Even six damage, that was the, the maximum we could get. And then a the momentum move, we can actually hide behind the cactus over here to pull back a little bit. To victory. There we go. And then it's up to the aliens. But both of them are disoriented. 
And I'm even hoping they fire at the turret. Yeah, they go for the turret itself. But the turret has ac actually has three armor, so might actually work against us in a minute if they don't manage to kill it. Okay, so that's two guys in cover. We can completely destroy that cover in a minute. So, moving further, let's start with Yvonne. Yvonne can move up, uh, put herself over here because we know she doesn't have the range to fire her grenade from there. So let's use that grenade now and fire away at both of these guys. I think I'm going to keep the cactus because that might be good full cover if needs be. By the way, they both hit the turret, even while disoriented. They both hit the turret without a single bit of problem. Don't know where she's aiming at, but she's new. There we go. That's four and three damage and remove the cover. So that means that Alessia should have a straight shot at the... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, there we go. At the... Oh. Yeah, she can only see the stun lancer, actually. And she doesn't really have a good shot. So let's fire anyway. So 58%. Might be... Yeah, completely missed. But we get one extra damage because of the... Uh, yeah, the stock. But I think we can finish him off. Ooh, no, we can't. He can't actually finish him off. I could, though. Volt. Psionic attack that can jump to nearby units. Costs one focus. Aha. That's actually really cool. Can do two to five damage. So let's use that. Wait, I can probably move a bit closer before I do that. So let's get in. We know there's nothing over there because we uh, attacked from that position. Volt actually does more damage to a sectoid as well. It can jump to nearby enemies. But I think I need to go for the guaranteed kill here. So kill the uh, advanced stun lancer with Volt, whatever that might be. Here we go. We'll see you in a second. Templar in action. Ooh. Yeah, that's just straight up Palpatine. That was awesome. Let's shoot one more time with the third. That was a complete miss. But at least we got it discombobulated a little bit. Um, then we have Sarah. I don't think she'll be able to move close enough, I think. So the sectoid is over there. I think if she moves over here, she's probably not close enough. No, she's not. So I'm just going to have to move her closer if we can. Uh, we still have enough options. Pretty sure I can kill it off with uh, Sarah's shard, uh, Heidi's shard gun. So if you put her a bit closer, this is still half cover. Yeah, let's just put it over here. Heading to that location. She can try out the shard gun first. If that doesn't work, uh, well, it's still disoriented, so. But I feel like it's not a problem. Yeah, there we go. Heidi is just the best. Uh, and then we can move up Sarah as we talked about. There we go. I love the blue color on the turrets as well. Oh, something exploded over there. We still have plenty of time because the timer only started once we were uh, we were breaking concealment. Um, now, I think we should probably take the time to move everybody up a bit. We still have six turns. Uh, do need to be careful that the turret suddenly doesn't wake up. But I'm going to reload Alessia and then move everybody up. We're near the objective. There we go. Objective in sight. We have a positive ID on the alien relay. It doesn't seem like there's anybody close by as well. So we might as well start shooting at the objective. Now that we can see it. I'm just going to move everybody a little bit closer. There we go. Let's have Yvonne fire at the relay. She can't actually can kill it in one shot. But she doesn't. Five out of six damage. Uh, and otherwise the turret can go into Overwatch again. Heidi can't actually see it, so she's going on Overwatch as well. And Sarah is also not in a proper position to fire at it, same as the uh, Templar. Oh god, uh, the turret just woke up. Does that thing get a free shot now or not? Okay, it doesn't. Great. Um, then I think... So I could kill it in one go with Sarah. Because she has another uh, combat protocol left. I'm actually wondering, can you do rend on a robot? She can, actually. That does 4 to 5 damage. Huh. Um, does anybody still have a grenade? 
So Alessia actually has a grenade, so might as well just move her closer. Since there are no other targets for her at this time. And let's use a grenade to shred the armor over here and most of the cover. Just to make things a little bit easier. And maybe we get another kill for the, uh, the Templar there. Because I think she does 4 damage with Rend. I love how that works on robots. I don't know if this thing actually explodes. Not entirely sure. I'm willing to take the risk. Just to see that animation again. Not that I saw a lot of it. But there we go. One focus. And then we can move back into position to get ready for the next strike. But I, I think that out. might actually be it. Because if Evolve now fires at the uh, transmitter. Although neutralize all enemy targets is not over yet. We're not done, so they might drop in a few. This one five, we've confirmed destruction of the relay. The alien transmission is down. Eliminate any remaining hostiles and move to evac. So, so since we did quite a few actions already, I just want to see if I can't hack that tower over there. Uh, I can, because that might actually hold some goodies as well. And since Sarah is uh, starting to become smarter and smarter hacking-wise, might as well take, take a look at this, because this thing can have upgrades as well. Blitz, the soldier gains one free use of the running gun ability, or the squad gains free use of the running gun ability. No. No, we're not going to do this because it doesn't give us any proper benefit. We don't, we're not even in combat at the moment. So let's cancel that and continue moving along. The forces of the occupation. Oh my god, after 10 freaking turns, it appears that the last two aliens were just cowering in fear behind, <laughs> behind the building. Okay, so can I immediately render this thing? Yeah, 100. 100% 100 on the... Uh, the sectoid over here, so yeah, bye bye sectoid. Oh wait, I hope that thing next to me doesn't explode. No, it doesn't. Ren damage increased. There we go, we get another focus. Then we get, uh, this, she has a shot, but Alessia also has a shot and it's 80%, so why not take it, right? Let's make this, get this over with really quickly. There we go. Get into that wheelbarrow, you dick. So they were just hiding out in the back. I think our Templar deserves a promotion there. Uh, we got another uh, point, because uh, an ability point, because we uh, shot from the height advantage. Flawless! There we go. No wounds, no, ki um, no kills on our side, and seven alien kills. I do like a shorter mission every once in a while. <laughs> that takes away from... Uh, the slog of fighting the lost in the last few episodes. So this is better. But no promotions. Even though like Lena got four kills in this one. But we do have a bond level up for uh, Sarah and Alessia. Which is also interesting. Is that... That wasn't available already, right? We get an auto loader and an advanced data pad. Uh, and we get two stun lancer corpses. A rack. A mech rack. Sec two sectoid corpses, a turret rack and a trooper corpse. So that's fine. So we found the data pad. Might have in valuable intel, but we need to spend research time on that. And then a mech. These mechanized units have a familiar humanoid form, but we haven't found any indication of a pilot or biological control system. I'm hoping that once we've pulled it apart, I'll be able to mirror some of their advancements in our own weapons and robotic systems. Considering the limited resources available to you, Commander, you have still managed to exceed my expectations. Excellent work. Thank you, thank you. I do love uh, a flawless mission. And there we go, we get another scientist. So now the game is yelling at me to uh, actually improve the bond. And now we have two bonds we can update. And I think I'm going to go for Heidi's bond first. Because now with Lena we have another sword player, so to speak. So uh, if we level up Heidi and Kelly, that's going to be great. So improve the bond in the training center. I don't know what this is going to do. Tygen, shut up. So it only takes three days and development of the bond level two gives the following benefits. So covert operators when deployed on a covert action together, the duration is reduced by one day. Spotter, this soldier is granted a bonus to aim at a bond mate has attacked or been attacked by the soldier's target. An extra bonus is granted if the bond mate is adjacent and stand by me when this soldier ends a move adjacent to their bondmate, their bondmate will be automatically cleansed of any negative mental effects. Ooh, does that include mind control? Ooh, 
That is cool. Let's confirm that. And then we get Fire Axis. So uh, that's a funny one, because of course the developer's is name is, is uh, Fire Axis. So that's just a scientist. Just a scientist we can get in six days. But I think we were doing something else, right? Sorry, assassin. Yeah, all again hypocrisy. Let's check this out. We can sell a few of our bits and pieces of inventory, but I want to first see what they have in store. 100 supplies for 35 intel. That's a pretty cool deal. We could also get another grenadier, and it's Kazumi Shimizu. So I think that's a her. That's really... Okay, chosen assassin information. Has hunt chosen covert action time. Those chosen are pretty bad for business. We'd be happy to pass along the latest rumors. Ooh, with 110 intel, we can actually rush the research for plated armor. Can I get a bit more intel? Because that would be incredible. Because I think we, if we sell stuff, we only get um, yeah, supplies in return. So nothing we can do about that. We could sell a few trooper courses, but that's not something we really want to do. Because intel is more important at this point. So, hmm. 110 is not far off from where we are, but I don't have a quick way of getting intel. So let's just leave the black market for now. We'll see later on if we need to get anything else. We could go to Replay HQ to get some intel, by the way. That would probably be the smartest move. So let's go over there and Set gather intel. Sector 12, East at the Reaper HQ. Because otherwise we just get a scientist or supplies. I don't really need either of those really soon. So let's just gain intel. And there we get uh, Paula's training is complete so she turned into a sharpshooter i think we have one more rookie that we can actually use so jessica is our final rookie we can actually train i want to proceed although no no wait i can actually keep her as our final rookie before we go as we might be able to train our rookies into the newer classes as well the uh, resistance classes so I'm not exactly sure what to think about that, but we're still one rank away from getting squad size 2. And we actually get to specialist training, we could get that as well. But uh, yeah, we don't have a, a high enough ranked soldier just yet. So nothing else to do than to just keep gathering uh, intel and resistance radio complete. Region. So let's check out the new research. And we get the advent data path decryption that's actually good because we can get intel and advent trooper autopsy is now instant um let's do the autopsy Knowing first that my past surgical experience is limited i am sure the crew appreciates that i hone my skills on fallen advent forces before triaging our own wounded to the uninitiated the common advent trooper is seemingly human the aliens have disguised this most glaring divergence from the human form with a carefully designed helmet. We kind of already knew that, of course, but we get the battle scanner in return. And then I think, I know I promised to do the plated armor, but since we now can rush it, actually, we might as well do the datapad decryption first so we get some intel. So let's do that now. It's only two days, so that should be fine. And then we can continue gathering intel. So those radio towers are very important uh, to get building as well, because that boosts up the supply, uh, the supply amount we get from each region on top of what we normally get. Plus, if we get all three of them in a continent, we actually get the continent bonus. There we go, we got the seven two intel. we sent to the training center have developed an even stronger bond. If we continue to send them out together in the field, their effectiveness will only grow. And the bond is also complete, so that aligns, aligns very nicely with what we were doing. So if you check out the training center now, we get the update there. But if you now do improve bond again, we can do that with Sarah and Alessia. Sarah and Alessia also have a second level bond we can uh, increase so there we go the same benefits let's go on the three day trip with them as well now now that we have 112 intel we might as well go to the black market again 
Uh, and what's the continent bonus? The power that awaits the elders, whether they realize its intent or not. This entity is cut of the gods' own cloth. It is as they are, a power beyond perception. I cannot judge our fate, but it is assuredly intertwined with the void that approaches. Okay, so the warlock indicating the power of the elders. So if we complete the continent bonus for Africa, we actually get munitions expert. Experimental ammo projects in the proving grounds are completed instantly. So the sooner we can get that, if we get that before the proving grounds are actually done, um, that will help us out in time as well. So let's go back to the black market and focus on plated armor first. So if you can complete that instantaneously, that is going to be an amazing step ahead. So let's buy rush research plated armor. There we go. Half remaining research time as well, but I don't think we need that. Wait. Halves remaining research time. Oh, so that doesn't even complete it instantaneously. It just halves remaining research time. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. And I don't think I want to do this. But still, I saw that with the extra scientist, it's only 15 days anymore. So I'm going to risk it. I don't know if the rush research actually means that it's completed instantaneously. I know it says instant, but... That's just us getting it instantaneously, but what it does is halves, yeah, it halves the remaining research time. That would mean only a difference of seven days, which is not worth 110 intel, I think. So let's just go with the supplies, and then we can go back, and I think we should be starting to place some radio towers then. So I think the most important part to put a tower in is actually West Africa, where the uh, the Advent Black Side is, because we have a link to Europe and we have one to South America as well. So let's go and build the tower over there. If we do that, we might actually be in time. Yeah, we're definitely in time before. Oh, that actually doesn't cost Intel as well. So we just need the supplies and we got 100 supplies from uh, our intel from the black market. So let's install a radio really over there then. As I said, it's been a while since I played XCOM, so it's uh, the finer details later on in the playthrough are a bit mucky for me. Oh, and a dark event is complete, so now the troopers have advanced soldiers are equipped with rounds that cause the bleeding, bleeding status effects. Okay, not that big of a problem. And now we get more avatar project progress as well, just because apparently. Commander, the aliens continue to make progress on the Avatar project. If we're going to slow them down, we'll need to move fast. We are doing exactly that, Bradford, so let's just... Uh, okay. And we get 36 intel from the Advent data pad decryption. But that means we can go back over here and we get no inspirations whatsoever. So I think we need to go... Well, I'm, not, uh, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we need to go with Play the Dorma next. There we go. And we get the Retaliation Strike. That was... Yeah, that was to be expected. We knew that was coming. So let's check it out where they have struck. Back in East Africa. So East Africa has been taking a lot of hits, by the way. Operation Mountain Slap on the Haven Assault. So let's check out who we can actually send over there. So the Templar was really, really cool. And we actually got a few bones here. Um, I'm gonna have to check what the bones are. Give me a second. So Lena has a bond with Yvonne, with our, gren our new grenadier. So let's check that out. So I need to actually keep that in mind. I can't bond anybody unless they are actually, or can I? I might actually be able to do this. Um, if I go to this icon, we get the bonds, but now, no, I can't confirm. So I need to do this right after a mission, because otherwise this doesn't really work. So this is going to be the squad. We're going with Kelly and Heidi, the new dynamic level 2 duo. And then Elena as a Reaper to just get civilians out of there as quickly as possible. Jacqueline Morel, our Sergeant Grenadier, is going to rack up some shit as well. And Lena, our newly formed Templar Trooper, is going to come along as well. Because I think her psionic abilities will come in handy. Since she has increased mobility as well. And of course Heidi is a good complement to that too. 
So, we are missing a sharpshooter like this, but that's not something I'm worrying about since we have Elena. But uh, next up, Operation Mountain Slap, our second retaliation strike of the series. So, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you see you guys in the next episode of XCOM 2 The Valkyrie playthrough. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.